So I'd like to welcome everyone to your village board meeting of October 27th. Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence for the victims of Hurricane Ian before I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, everyone. All right, before we get started, I just want to introduce the board. Starting from my far left, the triumphant return of Trustee Graziano. Next to him is Trustee Vic Farelli, Trustee Sue Suriella, Deputy Mayor Tara Burek, and also joining us on the dais is Village Clerk Desiree Potman. Uh, before we begin the meeting, I do have a special presentation to make. So at this time, I would like to ask our state senator, a worthy state senator, to head to the podium. Okay. It's been a long time since I've been at a Woodbury podium. Good to be back. And we are glad to have you here. So this job as mayor and being a village trustee is difficult. What makes it easier is when you have partners in government that are there for you from day one. And State Senator James Skoufis has been there for this, for me and this board since my administration started. Uh, it started with James when he reached out to me in my first week just to touch base with me how it went and said, hey, you know, Nothing, no buildings collapsed, no fires, nothing like that. So you did good in your first week. Yeah. But he has always been someone when we have faced funding needs or questions, he has always been there for us. Uh, just to sort of put that into perspective, he has already obtained for Woodbury, for the village of Woodbury, $430,000 in my 10 month period. He then, which I'm gonna announce tonight, uh, the Woodbury Community Ambulance is down to their last rig. They, their, their secondary rig is dead. They are now using a loaner rig. So here was our state senator coming to the rescue to provide $150,000 in funding for that rig. So on behalf of the village board, I'm going to read what we put together here. Uh, it's a quote from Gandhi. Uh, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. In recognition of a great public servant who has always found a way to put the residents of the village of Woodbury first, with gratitude and grant thanks, we honor your service to our community. Your fair representation and solid ethical values make you one of the best. So thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is humbling and really look, you know, I'm just doing my job and I appreciate the recognition and more importantly, I appreciate the partnership. Um, I view part of my job as supporting the work that you all do with local elected officials. And I totally understand, uh, especially given the constraints of the property tax cap and, and other, uh, uh, other issues you have to deal with you rely on your state representatives to come through when you need them. And so I, I'm very happy to, to play that role. Um, and, and look, Whipper is my home. You know, I grew up here uh, and I care deeply for this community. And so, and I know that you all do as well. You know, you have some of the most thankless jobs uh, in politics, you know, serving on a, a very local board and, um, and whenever I can, uh, whenever I have an opportunity to, to work with you all to help the people that I love here in, in this town, in this village, I want to do that. And I want to continue doing that. So thank you for this recognition and I look forward to many more years of thank you, working together. Thank, thank you. you. So I know, State Senator, you have to head off to Walkdale. Yeah. So by all means, thank you very much. I will see your assistant. And thank you. Once again, thank you. I'll see you all soon. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay, so we come to that moment of the program where we have Bill Canavan. You there? Bill Canavan just logged in. Congratulate me. It is impeccable. So Bill Canavan from Hydro Environmental <coughs> Solutions will give us an update on the well projects. So Bill, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you. Happy Happy Thursday evening, everyone. Um, happy to say we have nothing but good news to report. So the following is what's been completed. I'm going to do a quick recap so everybody's memory is refreshed, and then I'll go into the new stuff. Uh, we did a test well, as you as you all know, TW11. We did a pumping test. We documented that well, 268 gallons a minute, sand and gravel well, very good well. We then now we then moved forward with a second well in the same well field. We call it, uh, we've all labeled it test well 12. We ran a step drawdown test, which is uh, uh, pump the well at five different steps, so to speak. So we did 200 gallons a minute, 300 gallons a minute, 400 and 500. We then plot it on a hydrograph and we draw some best fit lines, do some math. We figured out the well is gonna be a north of 500 gallon a minute well. Just FYI, the well is 85 feet deep with 12 feet of 80 slot stainless steel well screen. Set a pump. The pumping test is, is gonna end tomorrow, but at present, the well's stable. We're pumping it at 550 gallons a minute. And so we believe, and we're gonna prove it in our water supply assessment report to the, to the town and the DOH for Orange County and state of New York, that it's a, a long-term water supply well at 550 gallons a minute. So the two wells to date, just repeat, 268 at TW11, 550 at TW12. We sent, we're going to sample the well for all the part five parameters. When we get the lab results back, we're going to report, it's all going to be included in our report, uh, you know, VOCs, uh, volatile organic compounds, the whole gamut. I think most of us in the room have seen it, so I don't need to list them, but the report is probably going to be out within the next three to four weeks, maybe five, because lab turnarounds are pretty slow. It's likely we're going to issue it as a draft if the lab takes too long. We'll review it with H2M, the town engineers. And then the next step would be submit the water supply assessment report for this well, TW12, to the Department of Health and DC and get it approved as a viable water source for the town. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. The last thing I'll say is um, based on what we're seeing at pumping 550 gallons a minute, and we also pumped the two wells, TW11 and TW12, simultaneously during the step drawdown test. And then we measured TW11 to determine interference and there's minimal interference. I believe we're somewhere in the neighborhood of six to seven feet of, of interference. So if, in other words, if we turn on TW12 at 550 gallons a minute, TW11 only drops six feet, uh, whatever it is, 400 feet away. So that's really good news. Uh, there's a well about eight feet from our pumping well right now that only has about 25 or 30 feet of drawdown. And the other surrounding wells that we've measured in the sand and gravel aquifer there in the well field, all show favorable drawdown levels. There's no interference with the stream. So if we, in other words, pump 11 and 12, we don't want to pull in surface water from Trout Brook. Not a good thing. Uh, introduces in, uh, contaminants to the well. We're not seeing that. And we're not seeing uh, any significant offsite impacts. So this is all, all really good news for the, for the village and the, and the future water supply. And the last thing I think I'll say is that um, we, I, I think, as, as a hydrogeologist and my company thinks, there's probably room for another well out there. Um, we might even be able to augment the village's water supply more than the five, 550 and 270. 
that that might take some a little more geology, a little more hydrogeology, some more exploratory drilling. But I think we can figure that out. And I, I, I know the board and most people are conscientious of budgets. Everything we've done to date, we're on budget for the original proposal that we sent the village and the village board. So that's all good news. Is that it, Bill? That's, that's not, I think that summarizes not, 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 any questions if anybody might have. Well, I'm going to start with uh, Trustee Graziano since this is like Christmas morning for him. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead, Trustee. No, it's really good news, Bill. If everybody in the audience and watching at home, it's just north of an extra million gallons per day. So, we look at about 1.1 million gallons per day augmentation of our supply, um, which is a good number, and that should get us kind of on the way to being where we need to be. Um, the PFAS samples are still coming back high from BFOA? Well, we, we, we're going to know that. Did you just say PFAS was coming He's dropping out. He's dropping out. Yeah. I, I didn't hear you. You got to repeat everything you just said, Bill, because you dropped out. Not everything, just let's talk. No, okay. so, <laughs> The PFAS. Uh, Tell us about the PFAS again. Well, I don't have those. So we don't have the results for, for, for TW12, the current well. However, as everybody knows, they were above the current drinking water standard at TW11. So we're anticipating that it's likely at TW12, the PFAS will be there and we're going to have to treat that water. So the combined treatment system, and I've talked with, um, Natalie and Sean from H2M extensively about this. And they're asking me like, well, how much do you want to, us to design for for treatment? So that's the stage we're at. And we'll report the results back and then H2M will design accordingly. What we did discuss, just so everybody knows, is if we're going to, if we, if we all reach an agreement, the consensus is, well, Bill, and his group want to get more water for the village in this well field, and we think it's there, then the treatment may be designed above the, you know, what the, the flow rates we have right now. So that's what's on the table. And we'll have those results, I would say, probably the second week in November, like 14th, 15th of November. And then we can, you know, I'm happy to come to another meeting and report back on what the PFAS and all the results indicate. But that, that's, that's the direction we're going in. Yeah, I would suggest that we tell Natalie that we should treat for the well field as one whole okay. treatment system and build the building big enough to expand it for another well in the future. We don't have to put the treatment in at this point, or we'll design that and say, you know, but when we do, if and when we do need another well for that well field, you should build that building with enough space to add another set of vessels in there okay. if needed to treat the extra well. So, you know, you can save a little now, but have built provisions in the future. That's right. kind of what I'm working on. Smart. Mickey, do you have anything you want to add, Mickey Phillips? Yes. Uh, Chris, I had a meeting with H2M the other day, and we're going to try to design those filters from anywhere from 1,100 gallons a minute to 1,400 gallons a minute, just in case we get more in the field we're in now, or if we go down to the Mama Leone. Okay. That makes sense. All right, Bill. So what we're gonna we're gonna tentatively schedule you to come back on the 15th. Okay. So um, and that way hopefully we'll have the, the water test results then. If we don't four weeks. Four weeks, yeah, but he's thinking that he's gonna have you back. Yeah. Yeah, so like 12 to 14. We might have PFAS, not all of it, but we might have PFAS back in 12 to 14 business days from today. I think a couple of weeks. Okay. All right, so you and I will touch base before I reschedule you for another meeting. Okay. Because uh, we're only gonna do the, well, we're gonna talk about it tonight, but only the one meeting in November. Okay, and can I just say one last thing, Mayor? Yes, sir. The, uh, the, the, the group that's out there, the drillers, the DPW group and H2M, it's been really good project working with them. Everybody's doing a great job. I just want to give everybody a shout out. Very good. And how's Jay's Deli been to you? You know what? 
Uh, actually, I like Taco Express. <laughs> All right, there you go. I know, yeah. I know the deli, so no disrespect to them. I'll have to try it, but I did like yeah. Taco Express. So. Oh, very good. All right, Bill, thank you once again for joining us. My pleasure. And, uh, we will be in touch. All right. Great. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Bye. Okay, moving right along to public comment on agenda items only. So I will say this, I know the bridge is on the agenda for this evening uh, with secret action. I would ask that if you are here to um, make comments on the bridge, you just wait until we do public comment because we do have news to present and we will do that when the bridge comes up on the agenda. So just be patient, we will get to it. So in this, at this time, do we have anything, uh, public comment on anything that's currently otherwise on the agenda? Coming once. Oh, that's public comment only on agenda items? Yes. Oh, no, sorry. Okay. Uh, going once, going twice, moving right along. So can I have a motion and a second to set receipt of the minutes for the meeting held on October 13th, 2022? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. I wasn't here. There you go. All right, Village Court Popman, will you please read abstract? Nine. Okay, abstract nine. <clears throat> Page vouchers 220801 through 220953, in total $703,393.03. All right. So, can I please have a motion and a second to accept abstract nine as read? Motion. Second. Second. Seconded by uh, Trustee Farrelly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Our next scheduled meeting, and we're going to go right into change the November meeting, is due to be November 10th. Now, also in the month of November, our meeting on the 24th is, of course, Thanksgiving. So what I'm looking to do is to merge the November 10th meeting and the November 24th meeting and reschedule for November 15th. So can I have a motion and a second to reschedule our, to cancel November, November 10th and 24th meeting and reschedule for November 15th at 7.30 p.m. Motion. Second. Second. It's, 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 let me guess, it's a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. It's a Tuesday. You're yeah. always fine. Okay, <laughs> always fine. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? I'm, I'm going with the group this day. There you go. Oh, I already have to write no. Good. That's why I did it. <laughs> Never assume. <laughs> and, and by the way, I just I'm want to say, hard. You know. I know some people may be disappointed because we promised that we would uh, dress in costumes tonight. Uh, we were planning on coming as Fleetwood Mac. But unfortunately, Trustees Ferrelli and Graziano got into a bit of a tip because he's, each of them wanted to be Stevie Nicks. So we decided to cancel the whole thing. Of course, uh, Village Park pop in did not get the memo. You so, said Village people, actually. Yeah, I well, was here you said the Village, village people. I know. That, I mean, that, was, that, was a bigger, that was even a bigger issue. So anyway, moving right along. Uh, approved change orders, new LED lights, lamps. Okay, recently the board approved the installation of LED lighting in all of its buildings, all the John buildings. With that work came two change orders, so can I please have a motion and a second to approve change order one, new LED lamps, fixtures, retrofit project totaling $841.90 for additional materials and hardware needed to needed for more rooms added to the proposal at all three locations. Motion. <laughs> I know, it was all in the motion. Change the English on that. I know. Yeah. 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 yeah, but I, I was gonna free from it anyway. All in favor? Aye. Uh, <laughs> all right. And finally, the second change order is change order two, uh, totaling $2,500. To remove and replace dimmer switches throughout Village Hall and the firehouse downstairs. 
I have a motion and a second, please. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Scheduled public hearing, Harriman Common Moratorium is tabled once again as the applicant has still not posted the required escrow. So consider that off the table for now. Moving on to new business. Uh, introductory Local Law 9 of 2022 that Attorney Norton has named towing. There you go. So uh, recently, uh, Lieutenant Phillips of the Woodbury Police Department, no relation to Water Superintendent Mickey Phillips, had ongoing conversations with uh, Village Attorney Norton and suggested a few changes to the towing law passed last year. So we are required to actually pass another local law to make those changes. So can I please have a motion and a second to introduce Local Law 9 of 2022, which would amend Chapter 283 entitled Towing to provide additional exemptions to the requirements for license to tow within the village of Woodbury. Second. Seconded. Uh, seconded by Deputy Mayor Bureau. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, moving right along. There's no secret action required for this. Uh, can I please have a motion and a second to refer introductory local law nine to the Woodbury Police Department for comments? Second. Okay. Seconded by Trustee Burek. I'm not going to give anything to Trustee Pirelli tonight. Um, no, no, you can. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right, finally, can I please have a motion and a second to schedule a public hearing to entertain public comment on introductory local law 9 of 2022 to be held on November 15th at 7.30 p.m. Motion. Second. Second. I second. Yes, I second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Moving right along to the approval proposal replacement of doors. So the downstairs double doors leading to the firehouse have been an issue for some time. We are in the process of receiving additional quotes uh, based on our procurement policy. So at this time, this item will be tabled to our next meeting. Uh, approval proposal replace existing domestic water table check backflow preventer. Once again, this has been an ongoing issue for some time. So can I please have a motion and a second to authorize me, the mayor, to sign the proposal from United totaling $10,444 for the replacement of the existing domestic water double check backflow preventer at Village Hall. Motion. Second. Second is right. Trustee Bureau, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, moving right along to secret action. Uh, Ridge Road Bridge Repairs. So can I please have a motion and second to, to, to declare the Village Board as lead agency under CEPRA for the Ridge Road Bridge Replacement Project. Hallelujah motion. Second. Second. Seconded by uh, Trustee Burek. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, can I please have a motion and second now to declare the Ridge Road Bridge Replacement Project as an unlisted action under CEPRA and to authorize Attorney Norton to circulate the notice of intent as required. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So here's the second part of that that we talked about uh, prior to the meeting started or once the meeting had started. So early in the week, I, I declared the Ridge Road Bridge an emergency for procurement purposes. Uh, I signed a letter of intent with the company to bring in to us and install a temporary bridge. Um, with the way this project has gone on and gone on, we thought that the temporary bridge would be the best solution for the time being and get us through the winter and put us back, put that bridge back in service. Um, I have here to share with you that this bridge should be back, this temporary bridge should be up and running by an operational by Thanksgiving, fingers crossed, famous last words. Uh, I also want to thank, I want to uh, acknowledge 
the work that Highway Superintendent Rob Wine has put into all this and the calls he has fielded, complaints and otherwise, since day one. And as, as everybody, anybody who attends my meetings knows that I am legally required to mention how Rob Wine is the, the bestest of highway superintendents in all of Orange County. Um, what we are looking to do is the permanent bridge structure once all uh, the I's have been dotting the T's and the cross with all the government agencies, the permanent bridge structure should be in place hopefully late spring of 2023. At that time, the bridge will then go back out again, but it shouldn't be so prolonged. Uh, I also want to acknowledge the town's involvement because we are going to be sharing the cost until uh, FEMA reimburses us for the cost to put in the temporary bridge. So, Rob, do you have anything you want to add to that? Did I cover everything? Okay. Got no question on that? <laughs> okay, that's it with the with the Ridge Road Bridge. So, fingers crossed. Hopefully by Thanksgiving, we're good to go. Just change the way. Right, you want to Okay, we have an extra item. Uh, price lock for electric supply. So I will ask the clerk Popman to read it off. Uh, in our Energy Resource Corporation, which is the village's energy supply consultants, I reached out regarding the locking price for electrical supply, which the current rate expires in November. Current rate we are paying is 0 0.05710 per kilowatt hour. <clears throat> the bids, of course, with everything that's been done, has gone up significantly higher. And the consultant is recommending that we do a 12 month bid with our current supplier constellation which is 0 0.11388, which is double what we're currently paying. She suggests we do only the 12 months, and if you have something called a um, dependent flex, is what I believe the terminology is, that if the rate drops during that period, we can then commit to the lower rate for the another 12 months. So that's what she's recommending we go. I'm just going to motion and effect the dollar rise. Is that there? To sign the contract once she sends it to me, which will probably be tonight. Okay, I'll be good. All right, so can I please have a motion and second to authorize me, the mayor, to sign the contract prepared by MNR Energy for the electrical energy supply from Constellation? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. There we go. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That ends. Did you say the bridge will be completed by Thanksgiving? No, the temporary bridge will be completed by Thanksgiving. But it hasn't been started. How is that possible? It's a temporary bridge. Yeah, I think it. I think it takes a little bit longer than that. So I'm not sure. Probably a little after Thanksgiving. But I'm not an engineer. I'm just. I'd rather say more. Well, I just think that's a little ambitious. Because I thought it was going to take about 40 days to order, and I. It's being delivered. Before on before Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. All right, but you've already the the borings have already been. Everything's been done. The bridge is being delivered before Thanksgiving. Okay, that's good. And then they have to put in the footings and stuff. So okay. probably will be after Thanksgiving. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Thank you for clarifying. Um, I just think that's really ambitious. That's why I'm like, <laughs> okay. So we're done with uh, regular village business. And that brings us to public comment. So at this time, and there's absolutely nobody but this one bag in the front row. So <laughs> I will go to row two. So anyone in row two wishing to speak? <coughs> you know the routine, Rich. Uh, Rich Catangio, Government Island States. Uh, with the temporary bridge, is there a weight limit? And if so, will it be posted? Going both ways. There, we're going to make the heaviest weight limit that we can for all our trucks because our trucks are obviously the most important to go across those bridges for snow removal, and they all will be posted. And it'll still be two way. Correct. Okay. And the second, uh, the timing is perfect. The Highland State Annual Meeting is Monday, December 5th, around hopefully the bridge will be done. 
So we'd like to invite the mayor and the trustees to our meeting Monday, December 5th for an update on that and uh, any other projects. Thank you, Thank you Rich. I might be there anyway for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> I think you live in the uh, Highland Estates, correct? Oh, you've been. What time is that? What time is the meeting? What time is the meeting? What time, what time is your board meeting? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, and it's at the um, community center. In community center. Right? Okay. Thank you. All right. Next in row two. Row three. That's you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's really not long. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Trustees. Uh, again, my name is Lynn Sear. I, I spoke at the last meeting, so thank you for allowing me time to make a comment. Um, I just wanted to follow up on a few items that uh, we had socialized last week, uh, one being action steps around the stipulation clause that was granted to Rushmore Estates for 2022. Uh, and sort of reporting out on progress with reviewing the zoning changes uh, for Rushmore Estates and owner occupied BNB that we have submitted. So, a couple of options that are critical in order for Rushmore to move forward as 2023 is fast approaching um, have come to our attention and we wanted to bring it to the board's attention. Time is really of the essence right now. Um, as 2022 is closing down, and to the extent we can't book for 2023, you know, we have to come up with options of either to sell, to close, or sort of where do we go from here. So I can't say <coughs> or stress more importantly that that timing is important right now. Um, I'm getting more honest than that. So we have submitted the event zoning proposals, and tonight I wanted to give rise that there is some case law that we can point to in Ulster County uh, that has the exact same facts and circumstances as we have been presenting. Owner occupied BB, um, and uh, they have been granted customary use or normal accessory use uh, where people can go and stay for those weddings that are booked. So while I recognize that we are Orange County, um, Ulster County is sort of aligned, I think from a geographical size, shape, culture um, with Orange County. So I, I wanted to give rise to that. And, and if we could get a meeting and we could kind of talk about where we are, we can provide additional color and context around that case law. Um, and plan B could always be amending the special permit that's in effect now and allowing the same use that's been in 2022 I just wanted to wait for them to finish speaking. Sorry. Um, allowing the same use to 2020, uh, 2023 that is happening in 2022. Um, 2022 events have run very smoothly. Um, and we have, as a team, collected some data points around safety. If safety happens to be an issue that's top of mind, um, it should be. Um, absolutely. So we, we do have some data points around fire and being access to things of that sort. Um, and in terms of setting precedent, Mayor, I know that you specifically um, addressed that being a major concern. And so I think what I'd like to highlight this evening is that Rushmore is a historical site. And there's only, I believe, two other, um, I would say, organizations or, or properties that fall under that same bucket of historical in the, in the town or the village. And those are the Neiman, and uh, Neiman Estates, and I apologize if I'm pronouncing it, and Cornell Estates. So I think from a precedent perspective, if we were to look at zoning changes and moving this process properly forward and swiftly, we could put in clauses around historical and kind of bypass the setting of precedent. Um, I think we stand out as a very different and unique property. Um, and again, we want to help you guys, uh, you guys, not proper English, but we want to help the village do this do this right. Um, I have left a couple of messages for our meeting. Um, I haven't gotten a response. So, Mayor, I would implore you to please, you know, um, let me know what your schedule looks like so we could sit down and maybe talk about specifics. Um, 
We also sent some formal requests in to discuss this further with the ZBA, with the board, with the trustees, um, council, town council, where most, most appropriate. Um, I know it's a responsibility for you to respond to us, but I do believe in my heart that this is a really good thing. Um, and we want good for the county, we want economic development. So I guess my question to, to the board is where, where do we go from here? Like where do we stand? Do we have a status? Can you share your perspectives? You want to mention that? No, I'll mention it later. Okay. So is that you just don't, you can't answer now, this is only for public comment, is that how it works? Yes. Okay, I don't know that. Yeah, so. if it's on the agenda, it's a... Okay, so I would respectfully request again to be <coughs> included in the agenda, as this is my second request, um, verbally, and have had several now um, soft copy resumes, uh, requests. So thank you, and that's all I've got. Thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. very great. Thank you. No. Uh, third row. Anyone else in the third row? So, in an effort not to ramble on. Let me let me stop you there. Oh. Start by telling us your name. Oh, my name is Beth Erickson. Erickson, is that? Erickson. There you go. Now. The floor is yours. Um, so again, in an effort not to ramble on, I actually wrote a little thing. <laughs> um, my family and I moved to New York from Virginia in 2001. Our friend offered her second home to us to live in while we searched for a house to buy. The home was quite unusual, as it was actually a dairy barn that had formerly belonged to a large estate. It was rather in the middle of nowhere and we didn't even have a home address. Leading up to the dairy barn was a dirt road, which we shared with the mansion that the dairy barn had formerly belonged to. The mansion sat majestically high on a hill, looming over us, stoic and aloof. There were no other houses around, just us and the mansion. And oh, how we desire to go through those iron gates, drive up the curved drive lined with period light posts, and satisfy our curiosity surrounding this beautiful, mysterious mansion. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm talking about Rushmore Estate. Rushmore Estate during the beginning stages of what we now know as Brigadier. My family and I ended up moving to Warwick, where we raised our three children. Fast forward about 15 years when my son, who is now an award-winning short film producer, was in search of a location for a film shoot and remembered the beautiful mansion, which was so forbidden to him in his childhood. He contacted the owner, Seth Pulver, who was so welcoming, kind, and enthusiastic about Rushmore being the location for a short film shoot, even by a producer still wet behind the ears, and he offered my son the beautiful ballroom for his film. I cannot tell you how excited we were to be invited to Rushmore after all those years, and it did not disappoint. The ballroom and the guest rooms were everything we imagined they were. The peace and beauty and history were truly magical. To date, my son has shot two of his short films at Rushmore. This is when and how my son and I met Russell Cohen, Seth's friend who helped him develop the idea of offering the estate as a bed and breakfast. I introduced myself as a professional who had many years of hospitality and event planning experience, and that when the time was right for them, would love to assist them in developing the business. Fast forward several more years, it's 2020, and the mansion has been operating as a B&B for a couple of years, and they are excited to spread their wings and start offering events and weddings. It was at this time that Russell reaches out to me for assistance in this endeavor, and I gladly and wholeheartedly accept. I actually end, I actually end up leaving my seven-year employment at Glenmere Mansion to join the staff at Rushmore and to focus on the weddings and the future of Rushmore State. Currently, I am the wedding planner for more than half the weddings at Rushmore. We have a professional, experienced, and well-trained team in place to greet and serve our guests 
which traveled to Rushmore from all over the world. I would never have imagined 20 years ago that to enter my place of employment, I would actually be entering through those iron gates and driving up the curved drive lined with period light post. I can tell you it's an honor to work there. It is such an honor when couples choose Rushmore State to be their wedding venue. It is such a joy to see the faces of our guests when they enter the property. Such a joy to serve our brides in this most beautiful and historic place. They will remember Rushmore for the rest of their lives. Every time they see their photos, they will remember their experience at Rushmore. Wedding photos are not the ones that get lost or pushed aside. They adorn mantles and walls and dressers and credences. Family and friends love to display wedding photos because of course everyone looks their best. And there is no better backdrop than Rushmore. Rushmore at this time in its existence is in the proper hands. Hands of where it should be. Hands that wanted to open it and share it with the world as it was meant to be. Rushmore, even in its beginning, was not meant just for one man. Even Charles Rushmore expanded and added a ballroom and four additional bedrooms because he wanted to share it. It was built to share. It was built to entertain. It is a community gem that should be allowed to shine as it always and inherently was meant to. to uh, just um, encourage a partner in government with Rushmore and the town of Woodbury. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else in row three? Row four? I know that you want. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Karen Fry, and I've lived in Monroe Woodbury for over 35 years, and I'm currently one of the event coordinators for Rushmore State and a host for the bed and breakfast. I've raised my three children in our home right down the road from Rushmore State in beautiful Central Valley. <clears throat> one of my sons recently got engaged and would love nothing more than to have his wedding at Rushmore in the hometown that he grew up in. This opportunity should be open to all of the young people who grew up here and want to stay here and be a part of this community. Besides weddings, Seth is offering his stunning mansion, ballroom, and pristine grounds to host many other functions and milestone events for our community, such as bridal showers, baby showers, bar mitzvahs, christenings, as well as any and all charity events. Seth is an avid believer in giving back to the community. He supports multiple charity events and loves hosting these events at Rushmore. The seniors of Woodbury, Mamre Woodbury sports team, Shabbat, mothers of West Point, and the Highland Mills food pantry, just to name a few. We're so fortunate to have this one of a kind historical mansion, bed and breakfast and venue available to all of us right in our hometown. Please, move forward with approving the permits that are needed so that we may continue generating business opportunities for local businesses and create a win-win opportunity for all of our families. Thank you. Anyone else in row four? Yeah, row five. I'm Seth Bolger, I'm the owner of Rushmore, and um, I figured I guess I would make one final plea to the village. Uh, as you know, I've been after these approvals for almost a decade, and it's been taking different paths and different iterations, and uh, recently, as you know, I thought I had the green light and go ahead and do what I was doing. And it turns out that that wasn't true. So at this point, next year, next season is the crux of the matter now. If I am not allowed to operate 
for 2023, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to stay in the house there. So all this time, I've been patiently going through the right channels, and I've been told by several people several times that Friday, you're going to hear something positive. You know, we want to take care of this. It is a good thing for the community, and it just never seems to come. The house is an exorbitant venture. Every month that I'm stalled up and held up costs tens of thousands of dollars. And I'm coming to the end of my path there. As I've explained before, being disabled and not doing dentistry anymore, if the house cannot produce an income, I'm going to have to sell it, which uh, I've come to accept maybe the fate. And if that's so, that's OK. But I need to know something definitive. And then what we are proposing uh, legally can be done. We have three or four different ways that it can be done. So legally, it's not a, an issue of it not being able to be done. It's really just a matter of if you want it to be done. So right now, the fate of that parcel, my future, the surrounding parcels, other parcels I own in town, it's all on a precipice right now. So I'm hoping that we can find some way to allow me to operate 2023 because those bookings are being taken now. And I'm hoping, as I always have, that we were, we'll be able to work something out long term somehow to do it the right way. But at this point, it's all about next, next year if I'm not allowed to find a way to operate next year. So you are to make that. Thank you. Anyone else in row five? Anyone else in row five? Anyone? Row six? Okay, anyone standing up? Anyone sitting down in the back? Doesn't matter who goes. Just to us. Good evening, Andrea Hunter, village, village town resident for 43 years, very active in this community. My husband has been in this town for since the 1800s. My family has grown up here, and we love this place where we live. I can't comment on some things tonight because we have a business in town. We've kind of been threatened about our business. So I can't make any comments tonight because I have a business to protect. I live in this town. I donate in this town. I volunteer in this town, as my whole entire family has done since the 1800s. Enough of that now. I am a member of the Woodbury Chamber. I want everyone to be aware. Halloween night, which is October 31st, which is on a Monday, we'll be hosting the local trunk or treat. Central Valley Elementary parking lot. The one that's across the street from the big stores across the street. That's the school where we're going to be at. Not Smith Club, not the middle school, Central Valley Elementary. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. We're going to start setting up at 4.30. Trunk or treat starts from 6 to 8. We invite all residents, children, adults, come in your costumes, anyone who wants to put a trunk up and decorate it, please come and do so. Everyone is invited to participate. We do ask that politicians are welcome to have their trunks decorated, hand out candy. We will not have any politicians walking through the school or handing out any political advertisement, being that the election is the following week. So thank you and have a good evening. And Gloria, have you've been having your business threatened because, with, because I, of this or is there not nothing else? Verbally spoken to, you have a business in town, I'll watch what you say. I'm done. I've done a lot for this town, village, whatever you want to call it. An EMT for 17 years. My husband was on the fire department. My in-laws family started the ambulance corps and the fire department. Everyone in this town and village 
has volunteered and given their blood, sweat, and tears. No one is above the law, and we're all the same in my eyes. Thank you. Anyone else in the... Uh, my name is Mary Rakowski. This is strictly unexpected of me, and it's not script or written down. But I have to say that I don't understand how you people <clears throat> in this town are watching two businesses struggle and not even putting out a hand, not a phone call, not a text message. How unhuman can you possibly be to see two people begging for their livelihood? I just don't understand. We all have a job, we all need a job, we all need to work, we all have bills. These people to me are coming to you on their hands and knees and it looks terrible. It really looks bad. Anyone else? I'll say one more. Go ahead. I'll make Let's it quick. George. I'll make it quick. Russell Collins, I'm a resident. I guess basically what I want to say is that to me, the, the core issue is that we were, Rushmore was granted its permits from the previous building inspector. From that moment, a wave started, a motion started. People were hired from all over the county. People left their jobs to come work at Rushmore. Money was spent to build the brand, to build the name on marketing. I watched it from the inside. It, it's a giant business. And to watch that land be procu procured and taken care of, it takes a village and it takes finances that you know I can't wrap my head around. So those approvals that were granted to Rushmore started everything. It started, it, it, it changed people's lives. Look, listen to the story of someone growing up here, now they're working here. It's a beautiful story. The story can continue or the story can end. It's that simple. I mean, it, and it, 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 it seems to me that we're fighting against you where we should be partnering. We shouldn't be against each other. We should be holding hands and joining as a team to make this happen. Why does it feel like there's some defensive thing going on here? You know, so I just feel like this story continues continues on the, what you guys decide. And we're not asking we're not we're not asking for a cure. We're not asking to change the wheel. We're not asking you to do what other municipalities have not done everywhere, all over the country. We're asking for you to find a way to make something that is into for the most good, for the most people in this community to continue. Because if it doesn't, it'll simply go into hands who don't care about the land. They will not care about the buildings. No one will care about it the way it's being cared for now. And the buildings will be changed and the land will be changed. So, you know, we, we just feel like we would love to find a way to unite as a community to make this business move forward and grant him the permits so he can keep the property. It's, it's that simple. I just, uh, it's that simple for me. So I, I appreciate your time and your, um, your, your consideration. I'm an attorney, so I can't tell you it's that simple. There are things that can be done. That's my turn. Uh, so, we, we were here uh, two weeks ago. Right after that meeting, I sent the uh, email that I had sent in proposing a zoning scheme that would be based upon your existing code, would follow the golf course zoning, which is the only place where I understand you can have a wedding now. Uh, and it is basically, as I outlined then, gives you control over the process. So that's a long-term solution. As I said, there's a short-term issue. Uh, the wedding season for 2023 starts now. Has started actually. Uh, and you can give approval for a wedding venue 
next year, but it won't help with the weddings that should be taking place that are in 2023. So there's a need for a short-term solution. There are three ways that that might work out. One is to uh, look at the possibility of amending the existing uh, bed and breakfast permit. They have a special permit, does allow the use. As uh, one of the previous speakers indicated, as I mentioned at the last meeting, there is there are zoning cases, at least one zoning case in Ulster County, which did find a bed and breakfast as, as an accessory use right. Where I think we ran into trouble with the building inspector was we went beyond that. We offered the venue for events, and some of those, many of those events turned out to be not for profit. So even though it was not something that was earning any revenue, it was an event and it became a problem because that went beyond the accessory use that would be allowed with the bed and breakfast. So we can modify the bed and breakfast permit to allow weddings that take place. We could restrict it to the people who attend. Uh, no, we would be restricted to guests of the bed and of the bed and breakfast, and that's one option. The other option would be to uh, basically extend the agreement that we had in 2022 to allow the uh, events to take place on the list and keep it to the same number of events that you allowed in 2022. As far as we know, those caused no problem, no, no nuisance, no complaints another way to proceed. The third option is to start the process of working forward with zoning and allow events to take place in anticipation of that happening. The short term issue again is the building, uh, actually it was an email from uh, your attorney uh, indicating that you had some awareness of marketing activities for 2023. Uh, as far as set knows, he doesn't have any active marketing campaigns. But it raises the issue because it was bottom line of that message is it's taking if an event is taking place, it's going to be an enforcement action. So it creates an issue for us. We could conduct the <coughs> activities with uh, notice of the uh, need to obtain village approvals, but uh, we need to be able to do something. So right now, with respect to the zoning. What the situation is, is in July, we have a letter from your attorney saying you have no interest in proceeding. So we need to know if that is still the case or not. If the board is interested in entertaining the zone, we understand it has to go through a process. Action has to be taken. We'll have a public hearing and make a determination on what you hear. But if you're not going to go with that, we really uh, don't have an option for 2023. And Fourth option is to uh, close it down and said that's to move out. So that's where we are. That's what we need. And uh, I hope you can give us some guidance tonight on your intentions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone virtually wishing to speak? Oh, you not oh, wait. We got one more. John Keller, Hi, I'm Mills. Uh, I got something totally off track of, um, and I don't want to take it away from Rushmore State. That is a very important topic. My issue, and it just popped in my head today, was the low bridges. We have three railroad bridges in this village. Strata Road, Smith Club Road, and Pine Mill Road. And the reason it popped in my head was I was coming down Smith Club Road today, and twice within an hour, there were three tractor trailers on Smith Club Road doing a U turn at Perone Circle. One tractor trailer was on the curb, and within inches of your sport apparel trying to turn around. I just shook my head and I said, this has got to stop. This is a daily occurrence. Now I know 
Smith Cove Road is a county road. So that becomes number one issue. It doesn't become a village problem. Correct, Rob? Well, it's actually an MTA problem. It was an MTA county. problem. Because it's at, at bridge, all the railroad bridges are owned by MTA. Okay. What I'm asking is what do we have to do? And can you start it? Can the village start it? Or you get involved, Mr. Mayor? They do it down in Westchester County on all the parkways. What do we need to do to get signage up on 32 and on all these roads? Stop these tractor trailers from going down Smith Road, from going up Pine Hill, because what they do is they come over Pine Hill, they get to that railroad bridge, and then they have to back all the way up and come back over. They've already hit the bridges a number of times. What have we got to do to stop that from happening? And how do we get signage on 32N? Because I know they don't use commercial GPS. I used to drive a truck. I used a commercial GPS. I wouldn't go down those roads. What they're doing is using their phones. And this doesn't tell you where the little bridges are. It's great. I backtracked the trailers out from my side of Smith Cove Road and all the way up to by the greens or whatever the roads are up there and gotten them turned around or gotten them turned around by um, the roofing company there. Steven. There's no room. We gotta address this and address it soon because it's gonna be a big problem. And I'm asking you, and I'm asking Rob, what do we need to do? Who do we, you know, and today of all, the railroad guys are standing right there on top of the bridge watching this happen. <laughs> I'm like, track trailer hits the bridge and they're just gonna go, Boop. So, can we address it and get it home? Yeah, I, I, I know there are signs on the road already. I'll take pictures of them tomorrow when I get into work. Um, I'm not responsible to put up those signs, and the is responsible to put up all the signs for their underpasses. I know they, re, they remarked them, they rebranded them last year. I'll have to just check Smith Road and make sure that is uh, the one is still up by the church. I believe there was one. I understand. Or they make the right from I understand that, but if they're not paying attention to the one going down Smith Road, do you think they're going to pay attention to one on 32? Honestly, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I mean, but I, I, will, I will reach out to MTA. I will reach out to MTA tomorrow. I have an email. We can try. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's, I mean, John, that's, that's really, we can try, but you can't legislate to complain. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. May I come in? Yep. Okay. Sorry, thank you again. Just five more minutes, and here. I do not want this to get contentious at all. But I need to now understand why there has been dialogue back and forth with you, sir, and you on a public comment. But when I ask a simple question of can we schedule a meeting to move this topic forward, I was told that I'm not allowed to do that. And I honestly, Mr. Broziano, did not know if that was permitted. But clearly, on record, you just had a conversation about a public comment issue. So now you need to explain that to me. Did we really answer his question just now? Or we said you we were going to handle it? engaged in conversation. Did we say we were going to handle it? OK, well, engage in conversation. We want to table this to November 15th to allow everybody on the board an opportunity to review all the comments received and so that we can properly address all the comments and where we stand. Okay, so you have acknowledged that you've got comments and that you've gotten written documentation. Yes. Okay. But you did engage. You did come up and with I just solutions. Engaged you I did. have nothing to do with yeah, what yeah. you guys I know. <laughs> <laughs> he gets asked questions, and if he doesn't answer, he answers. That's all I do. It doesn't have, we don't want it to be contentious either. Yeah, it's not my point. It's just, we all have to be accountable.
accountable, right? You guys are the government here. We're the taxpayers. So we all need to be accountable. And when someone asks for a We are also the taxpayers. Be, yes, just you just have to, be. to clarify, mm -hmm. we both live here as well. And we don't like seeing this. We don't like yes, Mary's do. comments. Right. I don't want to feel inhuman. And I will address every comment that was made. It does matter. It does matter. What does it matter? Okay, yes, it does matter. I mean, it doesn't matter that I, I don't say live that. Oh, I didn't it's say you didn't. I said I live here. He's asking me. So I'm sorry. Asking. I was no, I was talking over something. Just, let's get back on track. Right. You've gotten an answer now. What is my answer? So no, we have a 15th meeting. meeting. I will put it on the agenda for okay. public One, discussion. Thank you. Discussion. And, and then we can yeah. do this. And yeah. we will have Absolutely. our... That's exactly what I okay. want. If it's on the agenda, I, I am a happy person. Say it sooner and thank you. To create, you know, come back to the podium. I do apologize. Thank you. Go ahead, Beth. Just to add on to the Ukraine situation, Town Road was a nightmare to begin with. And with the bridge being closed, it's a bigger nightmare. The uh, ACE Road, which was a turn off, you know, a slight detour, that's been closed because of all the construction taking place there. So now we have, in addition to a 15 mil minute addition to getting out of Prada Mills and the areas back there, in this time when gas prices are rising, it's a, an emergency nightmare. It's an emergency nightmare for a fire. You get into those houses. All the houses are stick filled. So if it's going to take them that long to get there, right? Disaster. Ambulances, same thing. So in working with the um, getting that temporary bridge, I'm asking that we, the team here, do your best to push this through and not let it flounder or not like drag on longer than it has right before we have a real disaster. Thank you, Beth. Show up for Seth. I've been here for a moment. I don't, I don't know this community, my family, but I need my whole family up here. I see so many people invested in this. You know, they work here, they got family here. This man is built into shit. He's part of the community. If he sells, and because you don't allow him to do this. We all know somebody's going to buy that land. Somebody's going to do, there's going to be a development, there's going to be this. And I'm sorry. And you see signs of it where you see the leftover mailboxes, the garbage on the lawn. It's a different feel. Okay, I got the people in this, in this room. He cares about the, the bridges. I mean, the people care about what's going on for this community. Some groups don't. They're basically parasites where, you know what, they'll be here hands out when it serves their pen. Okay? Next, you know what, there's going to be another fire. This year, next year, whatever. That man's going to step up. There's going to be a need of fundraisers. That man's going to step up. These people that work for me are going to step up. And I just don't understand it. We live in the Brigadier Doom, okay? I'm one head of Ridge. I'm the biggest house in, this, in, that, in that community, aside from the Senate. As far as Senate President, if all of a sudden I told you, hey guys, I want to do a bread breakfast, you have to go away because it's not set up like that. I want to hold events. It's not set up like that. I have a parking lot in front of my house. If you drive by, it's, it's, my house is majestic. I take pride in my house. 
lives. But I am not in his position. He is all off. That is Rushmore Estates. I can't come across this is in the States because it doesn't work that way. So he has, person has been set historically to allow him to be the bed and breakfast. To make that investment. But also, wait, hold, hold on, stop. Let's hold him here and help him fail by not allowing him to take the next step. Okay? And you're going to put it on agenda. It's going to be a madhouse. I'll be here. But why, why is it going to be a madhouse? It's going to be a madhouse. Why is it going to be a madhouse? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it doesn't need to be a madhouse. I don't I well, don't think there are I'm just saying. Okay. 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 okay, okay, go ahead, Jimmy. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I apologize. No, I, I'm just saying, yes. here, it's a smaller group. We're more controlled. Vic, I know you live there. You see it. This man is one of us. Get it? Him being there makes us the bigger team, makes us the community. Whether you want to say Woodbury, whatever, whatever you want to call it, but at least he's part of the family. I just don't understand. I mean, I got, there's a lot of brain power in here trying to figure out ways of doing this, but there's just not the, you know, the agreement to let him do it. Basically, if you don't allow him to do it, what you're gonna wind up with, someone's gonna take it over, you may wind up with this, I, I don't have the details. Seven Springs, this new village they want to incorporate down in Monroe. We're going to wind up that way. Okay? You're going to wind up with a bunch of people that don't care about raising your families. Okay? You know what? The trick or treat. They're not, they're not going to care about this stuff. I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be in that village, that town where that happens. Every two weeks, these people come in, they plead, and you see, Seth, you're not a public speaker. You're a great human, but you're not a public speaker. <laughs> but you come up here, and you lay it out there. <laughs> the only thing he has not done is he has not got on his knees to beg and plead. And that's wrong. It is. It, it, it is wrong. I just don't understand. There has to be a way of making this work. Okay? It, 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 it really is. If, if my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter came to me, they wanted something, and it would sound reasonable, I would find a way to make it work, because that's family. Well, Seth is family. This whole it business is family. Rushmore States is part of the family. If you deny this for whatever reason, you, we're going to lose Rushmore States. When you said, and one by one, the families are leaving. Another two, I think since the last village meeting, another two homes were put up for sale in the Why? Because we're flourishing. It, 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 it's a bad time to sell. It's the winter. The rates are up on and on and on. But people are running. Let's go up and down 32. These big ass, beautiful retail spots are vacant. What up? You lose him. Who else is going to get affected? How many people have to find new jobs? How many businesses close down? At this point, it's just wrong. Okay? You know, we'll all be here. You know, we're trying to support each other. You know, I understand your positions as officials, but you almost have to find a way of making it work. The whole setup. Go up there, walk through, walk through. You know what? Set, can they go through? Can they see it? If they drive up Castleton, you'll see. He's there. Wow. You know what? He is as much a reason to visit this area as Woodbury Commons, the wineries, the orchards. But he needs a little help. And I, it's just like, you know, how, how much longer are we going to drag this out? Because, you know what? Yes, the bills are going to, you know, they're rising. You can't afford this. This doesn't make sense. I mean, if Seth won't beg, I'll beg. Because if Seth sells, I won't be here for because I have to sell too. Because I don't want to see what happens to the states. Getting a partial development, the redevelopment. I see you here. I remember you. You fought the dinosaur park. Yep. And that was great. 
If you got a group of people and you got something done and you stopped a major corporation, why can't we get this done? I mean, is, is there something we don't know? It, it, it just seems like something's wrong here. This man, everyone that works with him, forget about the families and the events and everything else. These people are family. And that's really what it's about. I dragged my family here. I moved my mom out of her house to be with my family. I got welcomed in the Brigham Tomb. People were dropping me off. They didn't know me. No one knew. People were dropping off things at the voice that me should know. The welcome to the neighborhood. I don't want to be this neighborhood. I mean, you know, thank you for putting it on the agenda. But I just I just don't understand what, you know, why, why this has got dragged out for so long, because this is an emergency situation. Switch so that emergency situation the same way the bridges and everything else is. Him shutting down is gonna kill the brigadier. Okay. And you know what? He thinks you think people are running from the brigadier now. Wait till wait till you sell. Thank you. That's a hard act to follow, but I have a very simple request. If it's going to be on the agenda, I assume, but I do want to ask that you would authorize your attorney to be prepared to provide you with any necessary guidance and feel to make those actions. The zoning action. No, but, 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 but of course I would be prepared. <laughs> he gets paid by the word he speaks. <laughs> so Joel has to back up there. <laughs> if I All right. Hey, by the word, I got a couple more copies. <laughs> <laughs> got a copy of Leo Tolstoy's War and Peace, if you'd like. <laughs> All right, any other, any other comments from the public? Rich? Rich, you don't get paid by the word. <laughs> I'd like to offer my services as far as the bridge. Uh, in addition to being on the planning board, we probably don't know. I'm on the MTA Metro North Committee, so I have a connection. Yeah, so, Rich, Rich, what about, what about the railroads? What about the railroads? Rich, Rich, where do we go with the where do we go with the railroad signs? For the where do we go with the low bridge signs? Because you're talking about the Ridge Road Bridge, right? No, I'm talking about the railroad bridges. Oh, then we're all good, Rich. Right there. Yeah. There you I go. work with him. Thank I have you. connection to the president, everybody. So, president, you know, really? Which president are we talking about? <laughs> 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 oh, the MTA. MTA. Okay. Yeah. He's I know it's five. He's 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 I know. Yeah. 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 Rich, Rich, will come. I work with him. Thank you, Rich. Okay. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, actually, anybody who is joining us virtually wish to speak? That's not at the parking head. Speak now, and forever hold your peace. Okay, with no further public comments, I will go out to the department heads for department comments, starting with Mike Pinella. Good evening, all. I have no comment tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Chief Burke. Uh, hello, everybody. I do not have any comments tonight. All right. Thank you, sir. Mickey Phillips for the trifecta. I'm <laughs> all good. Thank you. And right to Rob Wine. I think I've said enough. There you go. <laughs> Village Court Coffin. Yeah. So I just want to add on to what Maria said about trunk retreat. We have about 12 or 13 trunks already signed up. So that's a lot of candy. Um, like she said, anyone who wants to bring a trunk, please do. Um, even if you didn't sign up ahead of time, we'll make space for you. Plan on about six to eight hundred pieces of candy to hand out. We have a DJ planned. We will be playing during the night. There will be a food truck there for the parents who want to eat while the kids are running around. 
we do make sure it's safe so there's no cross traffic so everyone will be protected during that event. Uh, also want to remind everybody that there is a cur curfew in Woodbury during October 30th and 31st. No one under the age of 18 shall be allowed to remain idle, wander, stroll, or play in any public place, either on foot or to cruise about without a sense of destination in a vehicle any, between the hours of 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. I'm sure everyone who's lived here long enough or if you're new, you'll see the police are out patrolling on those particular days quite heavily. And in case you also didn't know, there will be a public vote on November 7th. Eighth, eighth. Of course, it's November eighth. It's the first. I got a lot. I got a lot of phone calls this week about why isn't it November first? Because it's usually the first Tuesday in November. But the law is it's the first Tuesday in November after the first Monday. So there you go. I do. I do. It's kind of amazing. Just like I got calls of what is trunk or treat because the sign says Halloween night, and I have to say October thirty first. So rain or shine. So remember, you vote election day. The early voting starts soon. And that's all I got. All right. Uh, board comments, starting with Trustee Graziano. All right, I got a couple of things to mark. One, make sure you drop a vote, please. Everyone, it's the best and most important thing you can possibly do and the best right we have as people is to drop a vote. If you want to make a difference and you want to be the change, vote. It doesn't matter who you support. I mean, I've said it a lot. I don't, at this point in my life, I've learned a few lessons. One of them is I don't care what letters are after your name. I'm going for you if you're the best person or not for the job. I don't care. Um, I'm not putting party over people. It doesn't matter what letters after my name either. Um, I want to thank Senator Scoopis. I am supporting him in this election this year, absolutely 100%. Um, he's done a, won a hell of a lot for us in Woodbury and getting us hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of grants that have all set taxpayer needs in this village. And that's just the, the help is immeasurable with all the work we have to do between bridges, between water, between everything else that we have on our plate, that help has been outstanding. Second thing is, and I, I understand frustrations with certain things and how they take a long time, believe me, that was one of my big, it's still one of my biggest pet peeves about working in government, is it is slow. And, you know, I owe Desiree an apology, I told her that earlier today, because when I first came into this job, I'm used to being in private business, I see that podium broke and I walk over, I fix the podium. That's how private works. Government doesn't work like that. Government works, the podium is broken, okay. Now you gotta go down to the Palisades Mall at night and come back before you can fix the podium. But you can't take a car, you have to walk. And sometimes the red tape is so big, they break your leg before you walk, so you have to go do it on crutches. <laughs> That's government, which is very frustrating, and it's very long, and I came in like a house of fire, and I do a hard apology because I was really pushy when I first came into this thing, trying to get things done fast. It doesn't work that way, and I'm starting to learn that. Um, I'm trying to short circuit the best I can. You know, you may have to walk to the walk down to the Palisades more, but maybe I can get an electric wheelchair instead of a crutch. So I'm still trying to shorten things up and get them done as fast as possible. And I've been really working with the engineers and the water people to try and do that and push things through. It's just painfully slow. And I acknowledge that, and it's just unfortunately the way New York State is set up is. Every time you think you got somewhere, there's a big red tape thing in front of you. You have to go around that one now, and then there's another one put up in front of you, then you have to go around that one. And it's, it gets frustrating after a while. It's for us as well as it does for the audience. So we are trying to get the bridge done as fast as possible. And probably about 17 state agencies have jumped in on the bridge from the DEC to complain about waterways, complain about fish breeding, eggs, you name it, it's come up. Every time something else happens, they throw another roadblock in the way, no pun intended on that one. But I'm, I know Rob and the team and, and everybody have been trying to get this thing addressed as fast as possible. I think we have a good solution now going forward. I live there, I, I, I understand the frustration. I live in the United States and I, I get it, but I also get that it's, you know, I kind of timed it myself and clocked it myself and it's literally a mile difference to go down Ridge Road than it is to go up So it's an extra mile out of my life. Um, so I've kind of learned to, you know, live with it a little bit and, and my daily commitment as well. But I'm looking forward to getting that done as quick as possible. So other than that, I thank everybody coming out and showing your interest tonight. This is 
whether you agree or don't agree, whether we agree or don't agree, this is what government should be. Participation by people and hearing what they have to say. And we as a, as a group have to make our decisions. And we make those decisions based on law and based on code and based on a lot of other things. But you guys participating in the process. I wish this was in every meeting. Regardless if I agree with it or not agree with it, it's, it, it's irrelevant at this point. It's just that this, this level of participation is for everything we do on this course. Because there's so many important things that go on here that nobody shows up to meetings for those really important things. You know, we were this close to running out of war, and we've had these issues going on for months now, and no one showed up for those meetings. But that's something that's very important. You run out of water, it doesn't matter who's wet, where, or wants to sell what. It doesn't matter if there's no water. You can't do anything then at that point. So there's things that are much, really much important that we should be taking stock of and coming out and supporting, not supporting, saying your piece. And I will say this, I respect everyone's opinion. Again, whether I agree, disagree, or whatever, I will respect and I will hear everyone's opinion. But at the end of the day, my entire being runs on what is the law and what is not the law, and that's how I look at things. I, it's that black man. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for coming out. Keep participating in the process. And, and good night. Trustee Perelli. Thank you. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight, um, either in person or online. I want to thank you all for the comments again. Um, I take the comments very seriously as well. Um, I am looking forward to the public hearing on November 15th. And um, that's really all I have to say at this time. You can make up for me. What? You can make up for you, yeah. I'm sure. Next month will be different. Okay. Trustee Serial. Thanks for everybody. I really love hearing all your insight. I want to say everybody go out and vote. It's a local election. I don't care who you vote for, just get out there and vote. It's important. It sometimes upsets me how few people go out and vote. And remember, Halloween is a half day of school here in the district. So we're going to have a lot of kids out on the street. Reduce your speed, tell your teens to slow down. I have mine are going to get the speech. And remember when you have teens at the door, like my 15 year old will be there with a bunch of his friends who are just there for the thrill of the hunt. And they come back and they trade their candy and they have a great time. So nobody's too old. That's it. That's it. All right, the BNA of yours. Thank you. Thank you again, everyone, for coming out. Um, to address you, Lynn, uh, Mr. I don't know how you want to be addressed. I don't want this to be contentious. I don't think anybody does want this to be contentious. Um, I know, or I can speak for myself, but I know these, these people up here pretty well. Um, every comment is taken to heart. Every comment, every piece of paper I have read, and oh boy, have I read. Um, this is my Seth Pulver file, Mr. Pulver. Um, you're a permanent fixture in my house. Um, because if you like, to, as I mentioned at the last meeting, I do like to understand everything that is presented before me before making a decision. I take comments. We got a bunch of emails and letters in the mail this week. Um, we can talk about this at the next meeting, but I, just please understand. Um, and I did say this to a few of you after the last meeting that reached out and thanked us for listening and, and for having an open mind. Um, nothing has been taken lightly. Nothing has been a rash decision. Nothing has been taken on its surface because there is a lot of history of the property and um, a lot of history of Mr. Pulver and different approvals he has tried to get over the years. And I think that's very important to understand as it relates to this process today. And I, I just want you all to know that this is not a light decision and I know it seems like it's been going on for a very long time. Um, there are many considerations here, which we will get into, and um, we can, I'm, I'll, I'll stop there because I can go on and on about this. Um, Mr. Polwer, I, I don't want you to think that we're not hearing you and feeling everything that you said. Um, Mary, same for you. I think you speak, if she's still here, I know you speak from the heart, and I know, I know, and you're passionate, and I do appreciate it, um, and even if, 
it does hurt to hear what you said. Um, I appreciate what you said because it's it's honest. So um, with that, I'm going to stop speaking. I'm uh, going to, yes, keep it brief. And uh, just again, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your comments and I look forward to speaking more in depth. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, thank, thank you. I just wanted to respond that thank you. I appreciate that. And, and having the dialogue and the transparency helps a bit. Um, it helps a lot. I, I think uh, it's what I we just, are. I would just like to respectfully request that we we move swiftly, regardless of which way we go as a team. I think 2023 is fast approaching. And just to respond to Mr. Graziano, you asked me a specific question if I lived here. I think you said, do you even live here? So was that a question? And I think the answer is I'm a Monroe Woodbury resident, but I am allowed to publicly speak. I live in Monroe and have had an enormous amount of experience with, let's just say, land and land use and preserving and things of that sort. So that's one of the reasons I'm here. In addition, I'm trying to book a 2023 event, and I've been unsuccessful, and it was a $20,000 event for the Children's Cancer Fund out of Maria Ferraro's hospital. So that's the second reason that I'm here speaking. And lastly, I've worked very closely with the Village of Monroe's mayor in terms of zoning changes as it resulted in retail space. Um, the laws hadn't been changed since like 1930 something, and it was a real painful process, so I have a little bit of insight. So to answer your question, Mr. Graziano, no, I do not live here, but there are reasons why I'm here on behalf of the broader group. So I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Okay. I knew you lived in there. I thought you were talking to me. I'm like, I know where you live. <laughs> no, you asked me while I was speaking. So I, 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 so I was talking I over the two of you. That I, I could respond to it timely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'll end there. And thank you all very much for your patience. And, and to answer you, Lynn, we will move swiftly. Um, I don't think anybody wants this dragging on and on. Um, but you want to see it? Um, I actually do like your comments, uh, believe it or not. It doesn't matter how what you're saying. You're always very thoughtful. Um, and that's another thing, very quickly, I know I should have said shut up, but no, but this is good. It, it, it's very good, and I just, regardless of what you think happens, we're all really decent human beings, okay? We're all tax-paying residents, we all have children in the district, most of us, and um, things that are said in social media, just think before you post, because the way it comes across is... We're people, we're human too. So thank you very much again, and I will stop it then. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm getting all no, the feels. I'm sorry. <laughs> Since everyone's jumping in, I, I think part of the issue that we all were having is that no one was responding to anything we were saying or sending. So we were just feeling ignored. So this, Everything you just said, actually, I know it made me feel better. At oh. least we feel like we read every letter. Rest. Every letter, I know I did. I mean, I read them three times each. Uh, they're here. They're they're in my file. Um, as is Mr. Your what well, was I, I? I keep I read. I highlight. I index. I'm an accountant. This is what I do. Sue, so, Lynn, you understand me? Yes. So. That's all. Well, and then it's not maroon. It's, it's not maroon. No, no, no. I, I love the maroon at home. <laughs> That's, that's, that's a CPA job. We, yeah. we wanted to know that we were being heard. You're being heard. Because yeah. this has been dragging on, not just for years, but even from between April and two weeks ago. Nothing was addressed, nothing was said. So Understood. we just needed to know that we were being heard. Have it clear. All right. Uh, with no further business to discuss or comments received, can I please have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting? Motion. Second. Oh, let me just say this on, on I, no. just for clarification, we're going to put it on the November 15th agenda. It's not a public hearing. So it is discussion. for discussion. By the board. By the board. Can you explain to us, ladies, what that means? It means that you're going to hear everything we have to say in response to everything that you have. Um, it's not a back and forth, it's us. Oh, but can there, right. can there, okay. Can I get a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting? Motion. Second. I'll get my answer. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
All right, next scheduled meeting is officially November 15th. In the meantime, with our advocates yourselves and each other. That's it.